Hi, I'm David with Portrait Displays. As displays have increased in luminance to accommodate the requirements of high dynamic range content, it has become more important than ever to accurately assess one display's capability against another. By doing so, users can make educated purchasing decisions while setting performance expectations when choosing a display. To solve this problem, the team at NHK Tokyo developed gamut rings. This new method visualizes three-dimensional color gamut data in a two-dimensional diagram. Since then, our customers have sent countless requests for us to develop an easy and effective way to automate gamut rings as only CalMan can do. Well, I'm pleased to inform you that our team has risen to the challenge and NHK's gamut rings are now available in CalMan 5.15.6 and later. But I don't just want to tell you about it, I want to show you. So let's take a deeper dive into CalMan's new Gamut Rings feature. To get started, let's launch CalMan. Today, I'm running CalMan Studio. Gamut Rings are included in CalMan Studio, CalMan Video Pro, and CalMan Ultimate. With CalMan launched, let's now go up to the top left here and click on the CalMan icon. Let's come down to Open Workflow Template, Analysis, and click on Color Volume Analysis. We're greeted with the setup page of the Color Volume Analysis workflow. You'll notice here on the left, I have my sidebar open where I can see all the workflow steps. If you'd like to get rid of that, you can click on this arrow. If you don't have it, you can click on the arrow to bring it back out. I like to pin this so I can keep an eye on where I'm at in my workflow. For today, we're gonna to use the C-Lab Color Volume. Click on C-Lab Color Volume, and now we're at Hardware Connect. For the purpose of this demo, we're using the Sony A95L Quantum Dot OLED. As a measurement device, we're using the C6 HDR5000, and as a test pattern source, we're using the Portrait Displays G1 Pattern Generator. So let's use the Hardware Connect page to get everything connected. Press Find Meter. I'm gonna uncheck my colorimetry research for this video. Make sure all meters except those listed below are selected, and press Search. Now, CalMan already has a meter profile for the C6 HDR5000 and the Sony A95L. I have that selected here, the Sony Quantum OLED 2023 profile. From here, let's now find our source. We'll press Find Source, Manufacturer, Portrait Displays, select the Model G1. CalMan has already found the G1 pattern generator on the network. We'll click on it and press Connect. Next, we'll want to configure our metadata. Come over to the window size. You'll notice in the workflow, it suggests a window of 4-40. The G1 pattern generator has window 4-40. We'll select that. We're going to leave the delay at one second. Our color format in RGB. We're going to set the 1920 by 1080 resolution to 3840 by 2160. And we'll leave this in limited video range for what we're doing here today. Next though, I am gonna turn on HDR10. I'd like to measure the display volume of the Sony N95L using gamut rings in the HDR mode. Let's now press next and move on to the next workflow page. We're now greeted with pattern insertion. Kalman has some recommended settings here for various display technologies that'll help you get started, but make sure you tweak these as necessary to make sure you're getting repeatable results. For the Sony A95L in HDR, I actually have my application measurement options set to both a time-based pattern insertion and a patch-based pattern insertion. You can see these values here and you can adjust them as necessary for your display. Let's press next. At this point, we're taking to the C-Lab color volume portion of the workflow. I actually don't wanna do this step at this point because we're really here to talk about gamut rings. So I'm gonna come back over to the left-hand column select gamut rings, and now I'm on the gamut rings workflow. My gamut target, since I'm measuring HDR, I'm gonna to change to BT2020 HDR. My EOTF target, I'm gonna keep ST2084 HDR PQ. And because I've been sitting on this pattern for a little bit long, I am gonna bring up my brightness pattern just to cool it off for a moment. With the display now having a moment to cool off, Let's press measure and let's get the process started. The C-Lab gamut rings layout measures 602 points and calculates the display volume. What matters here is how much of a reference color space the display can reproduce when receiving a particular video signal. 
Here, we're sending HDR BT2020 content, so we're looking to see how much the display can actually reproduce of that standard. Just because a display may have a higher luminance doesn't always mean the display has a higher color brightness. Let's take a look at the results. Okay, the gamut rings have now been measured. I'm going to export my gamut rings data by clicking on the button here in the bottom left. And I'm just going to save this out to my desktop so I have a backup. Okay, so if we're evaluating the gamut rings, we have a couple things here on the chart. In the top left, we have the gamut target, which we have set to BT2020 HDR. We have the EOTF target set to ST2084 HDR PQ. And below that, you'll see a data grid. The data grid illustrates the L10 through L100. If you look at the chart on the right, we have these gamut rings coming from the center and moving out to the edge. Those start at the 0% luminance and move all the way out to 100% at the edge. If you look back on the data chart on the left, you'll notice percent target. That's 82.09%. So what we're seeing here is this display is doing 82.09% of BT2020 PQ. Our maximum luminance in the bottom right is 1,320 nits, and our minimum was zero, what we would expect from the Sony A95L. If we look back over on the right, we can look at where the errors are. Where you see the gray is where we're deficient. So as you look at this chart and you look towards the left, you'll notice that we have larger gray error in the green. We don't have much in the blue magenta, and we have a little more in the red yellow on the right. Now let's take a deeper dive into what we can do with the charts. If you'd like to explore a little bit more, right click on the chart and go to properties. Here you'll have a number of options that you can adjust to customize the chart to how you wish to see it. You'll notice there's an outer gamut which is currently set to our target. Now I'm going to change the outer gamut to the cube data and keep the inner gamut to the cube data. So we're essentially going to be looking at the data itself. You can see how this has changed and those gray areas have now gone away. Let's right click again and go to properties. I can also change the target so that I keep the inner gamut as the cube data, come back over here to gamut target and look for something else. Let's say we want to see how this compares to P3D65. We can select P3D65 and keep the EOTF target set to ST2084. Now we can see how well we're tracking PQ with P3D65. You'll notice this display has a very good display volume when compared against D65 P3. Again, we can come here and now select yet another target. Let's come back and look at BT709. We've also changed our EOTF target, but I'd like to keep that in PQ. So I'll come back down and set this to ST2084 HDR PQ. Once again, the display volume is handling this very nicely. We're able to completely fill the BT709 in PQ other than at this very outer edge where we're missing the luminance aspect. Let's change this back to ST2084 BT2020 HDR. Now let's come back and right click on the chart and select properties. We can now enable pre-calculated color spaces. This is a great feature if you'd like to see how well a theoretical color space such as P3D65 SC2084 might look inside of the target. As you can see, putting P3D65 ST2084 inside of BT2020 HDR has some deficiencies, which we expect because it's not quite as large of a space as BT2020. Now, if we right click, go back to properties and change the inner gamut from P3D65 SD24 to our cube data, which is the data we've measured, we can now see how much better this display is doing in comparison to the P3D65 as it changes. So there's one more thing I'd like to go over with the gamut rings chart. And that is, if you right click on the chart, go to properties, and click on Allow Drag and Zoom. Now what you can do is you can click on the chart, move it around by dragging it, or you can scroll in and you can zoom in to see the data in more detail. I hope you enjoyed our quick overview of the Gamut Rings feature in Calman. For more information, please visit our knowledge base at portrait.com. Thank you, and we'll see you on the next one.